uh, we've each done one. This is the fourth fourth EP. Um, so I wrote and produced it. And a great thing is that we get to explore sounds that we probably wouldn't do on a full length release and then experiment in a way that's sort of safe to fail, if you will. Joe and Marcus of Necro Panther, good to see you again. Uh, you know, I know that Joe is uh, just you know playing some jazz in New Orleans recently. Marcus, I don't know what you've been up to, but uh, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm good. I unfortunately have not been playing jazz, nor have I been in New Orleans. So, otherwise, good. <laughs> awesome, awesome, Joe. This is a uh, uh, the EP is coming. It's a special one for you. How are you feeling right now? Uh, terrific, um, you know, relaxed. The the hay is in the barn, as we say in the in the rural United States. Um, so, you know, all the work is done, and and it's time for it's time for what we the art that we created to live its own life out in the world. And that's that's always an exciting feeling, but also coming back to regular life where where you're not trying to create something new feverishly every day. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to do with all my free time. Awesome, awesome. Well, I hope that that would just naturally result in you creating after all and, and seeing more music even faster. So there's there's uh, quite a few things to go into. So we've got an EP coming out, which is really exciting stuff. Now, uh, for people that don't know the band just as well as some other people, this is um, another EP that, in this case, Joe, this is your EP. If, um, and it and one by one you guys have used not well, pun intended um you guys have a kind of like um chaperoned an ep if you will in the band um you know writing yeah, songs that's, for that. that's right how does that go um, yeah that's that's right we um you know when when marcus joined the band after uh eyes of blue light he, he came in and crushed his parts, but he also brought a lot of material with him that wasn't going to make that record. And so we sort of reloaded and, and released that as an EP that he wrote and produced. And it mm -hmm. wasn't very long getting into that, that I think the rest of us realized that would be something that we were interested in doing, uh, both because we all write and... Um, that means that we have to collaborate and even compromise on the material that makes the record every time, but also because the Necro Panther LPs have, um, I don't, I wouldn't say that it's a formula, but maybe a format that we have a certain uh, sound that we want to accomplish in the LPs. And so it's a, it's a pretty high risk situation to go off uh, on, on, uh, off out, out on the deep end and do experiments that we would otherwise you, you know to get the whole band to agree to so yeah. in the course of doing these eps uh we've each done one this is the fourth fourth ep um so i wrote and produced it and a great thing is that we get to explore sounds that we probably wouldn't do on a full length release and then experiment in a way that's sort of safe to fail if you will and those sounds have even made their way into the lps afterwards as as we sort of establish new ways of working help me understand is there like can you guys put a veto there or is it like anything goes um because you at, at one point you know you're still releasing this as a Necro Panther EP. This is not even Kiss in 1978 releasing four solo records at the same time under <laughs> each individual member's name. Like, this is a Necro right. Panther EP. So, you know, if Joe yeah. came out with like, hey, here are four country songs, are you guys like, cool? Or is it like, hold up, I have some thoughts. Help me understand. I, I think that it would kind of depend on the context of where we're at as a group and what we're trying to accomplish like what we've done and what we're looking to do in the future um but i think by and large if 
one member if, if our goal is let's keep the ep cycle going we want to have one person's voice highlighted and we want to expand the boundaries or just expand our, our musical scope then it's pretty much anything goes it would have to be something really wild for us to actually try to like veto something as opposed to just like yeah cool how do we how do we make this part of our you know catalog yeah yeah, yeah. so joe for you like is there any like conscious bias going into your writing that you go like that like you know that you're writing for necropanther at the end of the day like i know that you're and we'll touch on that in just a second this is a very varied ep with a lot of different styles coming at us but when you are creating this are you like okay i'm still i'm i'm writing for necropanther or not at all because we know that you're a very versatile musician that plays a lot of different styles like do you keep that in mind when you were writing specifically for the CP? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think um, I, I think at the end of the day, all four of us in Necropanther are aligned that this project is a heavy metal project. So right. Um, right. those those st styles that would violate being a heavy metal band, I think that that's probably a pretty pretty firm barrier for all of us. We might venture out of it for a second, but at the end of the day, any composition has to return back to metal. But then within that, we have a very expansive view of metal. We we take uh, influence from all the subgenres of metal and other styles beyond metal, but we play them in a metal context. So yeah. positional standpoint, the musical notes would could be jazz it could be classical music it could be rock but it's played always by a metal band and in this case with some additional instrumentation of a musician yeah. who's not a metal musician but brought into a heavy metal context maybe even against his will <laughs> well i mean so people that that have been following the band uh, know that you're talking about rico jones who's a saxophone player i mean at the end of the day take quite literally a metal instrument. You're adding this to uh, into the sound that it weaves well with like classic 80s heavy metal, kind of gives you that, you know, sensual sunset at the beach vibe straight away uh, with, with songs as well. But, you know, you're exploring in this EP traditional heavy metal, We've got some like, you know, upbeat and wobbling there as well. We've got some big doom elements as well. Um, what made you go to those specific subgenres, if you will? Um, that's a great question. We, you know, as as an EP, I, w I knew that I wanted to tell an original story and I knew that I wanted to play with different subgenres like we do in Necropanther and maybe even take that to greater extremes. Mm -hmm. The other... Um, extra metal influence that I brought in that helped to bring structure to the EP is classical music and the four movements of the classical symphony. And so I tried to superimpose sub genres from metal to recapitulate a movement of a classical symphony with some vague notion that other heavy metal bands might do a similar thing as a way to um, articulate several moods as opposed to uh, a single mood over and over again in the way that uh, many, many heavy metal bands tend to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Now, it, it's not just a, like from a musical perspective, a concept and like there's you're, you're a storyteller as well with the lyrical part of things. How hard you say like, you know, creating a symphony um, how hard is it to both from a from a lyrical and a musical perspective to cram a story into four songs? Like you know, uh, writing a short story is often more a good short story is often more difficult than writing a book. Uh, how was that for you? Um, it, you know, I think we learned a lot in Eyes of Blue Light because that the source material from that is quite large, and so cramming that into forty minutes. It's um, one of the things that we worked on was having maybe an, a little bit of an operatic approach where you assume different voices 
to articulate a scene as opposed to being expository all the time so we did a little bit of that and that happens in this ep as well okay. some of the some of the voices are implied to be characters and, and also having the two uh, vocal tones with marcus and paul help to to art articulate that the other thing that i really take from dune uh is that there are those quotes at the beginning of each chapter and even Gurney Halleck quotes other texts throughout the course of the story. And those are all allusions to other, other activities and other cultural phenomena that are never fully explained. And that helps to bring richness to the world. So I tried to have some of those allusions, references to things that are never fully explained. And hopefully that lends a bit of mystery, but also plays on the audience's imagination if they're listening carefully to sort of fill in the areas outside the edge of the paper. So, uh, Marcus, uh, you started this whole thing with, you know, bringing your own material to to the band and, and this, 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 you know, uh, this story or this, this group of EPs. Um, it's finalized now. Does that mean that you've been like sitting on material? You can't wait to start the next cycle, or is the bench going to look for a fifth member to do a fifth EP, or is this whole story done now? And are we looking at other things? It, I hope it's not done. Um, I know that we're since Joe's EP is out into the world now. We're shifting our focus to go back to the full lengths, and we're starting to put together material for that. Yeah, I don't. I don't want the EP stuff to be over. I feel like it's it's a worthwhile exercise. It's fun. It's a good way to put out more unique things and keep pushing our musical boundaries. But I mean, you know, we may also have like a, a different idea about right. if we're gonna instead of doing one person, maybe it's a let's collab with two people, or or maybe it's covers, or who knows what it's gonna be. So. Yeah, we'll we'll see what the group wants to do. But I mean, for me, you know, I I certainly wouldn't count anything as closed or as done yet. Yeah, and and Marcus, did this 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 kind of like um, reset, if you will, of the band, or like allowing you guys to focus on something that is not quote unquote part of the the main releases. Um, does that help with offsetting potential pressure as well? Because Betrayal, the last full-length album, was received quite well uh, by a lot of people, including by me. I still think it's the best Thank album you. of last yeah. year. Um, but, you know, as you're working towards the next main release, like, seeing that album do so well for the do-it-yourself indie band, um, did, does, did that at the time raise pressure when you're thinking about what's next from a full-length? And thus creating an EP like this as a bit of a side project, does that kind of help you kind of, you know, clear out those, those, uh, those, those, those feelings? For me, no, I, I certainly wasn't feeling pressure. I was just feeling excitement and, and stoked the whole time we were putting that together. Um, and I mean, as well as betrayal was received, you know, that makes me really happy to see how well it did for, you know, I'm not looking to, replicate that or or in any way like gauge our next output based off of what we already did for me the next one is the next one it's it's its own thing it's another uh touchstone moment in our careers and in our lives so it's it's going to be its own separate thing so no i don't think that these are like pressure release uh eps that we put out it's just like if we're not working on a full length, let's be doing something else. And if people have material, people have ideas, then we have the ability to like kind of get behind them and and add our talents to whatever they have. So I don't know, not much pressure to me. Just just stoked and just uh, just get, make more art, man. Now, before you make more art. We need to see more live shows, and we need to see them soon. Uh, now, I know that you guys are going to play uh, in June with Artillery. I saw these guys play here in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. Fantastic show. Very, very sweaty show. Um, 
But uh, what uh, what 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 are you guys planning? What 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 you're working on? Um, what can we know at this point? Yeah, I think so. Since we talked last, um, we we have been playing out. Uh, it um, we have done some some traveling. We've done Wichita, Albuquerque. Uh, we've got Salt Lake City coming up later uh, later this summer, and uh, we're going up to the mountains a couple of times later this summer as well. Uh, we don't have uh, any tours as such planned at the moment. Um, you know, it's not to say we couldn't do that, but the the uh, the the situation would need to be right. Um, in terms of that last the last question about what are we going to do and and do we have pressure? I think we definitely want to perform and deliver at a certain level, regardless of what we're what we're doing and doing that as an independent band that owns their publishing, owns their masters, has ultimate creative control. I think that that's something that's going to be consistent in anything we do going forward, whether that's an LP, an EP, or, or our live show. Well, Joe and Marcus, I'm excited because uh, I do hope to see more of those shows, whether they're standalone shows whether they are part of festivals over the summer whether they are an actual tour being announced i just hope to see you guys on the stage soon uh excited for this ep to come out to the masses and i'll you know already stay tuned for what's next whether that is a full-length album or a covers album that marcus teased just now i'm curious to see what uh what kind of songs you might give the necro panther treatment so all good stuff i'll keep my eyes open thank you guys so much for your time today i always appreciate it and uh, I hope to see you guys real soon. It's great to see you again, Jasper. Jasper. Thanks for talking. Awesome. There Thanks, you go. Jasper, it's a pleasure talking to you as always. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.